Welcome to beautiful Ireland. Right now we're at the Cliffs of Moher, a destination Olivia and I both wanted to visit for a very long time. We're starting our Ireland trip in Galway and making our way back to Dublin. So stick around because in this video we're going to be exploring Galway, visiting the Cliffs of Moher. We're going to be listening to some live music at the pub, eating some good seafood and whatever else comes away. Let's go explore Ireland and we're going to be starting with some breakfast. <music> But before we go get our breakfast, here's a little view of our snug room. It's called Snug Townhouse. And guys, this is the walking space. Walking space. This is it, that's all we have. So the hotel is actually a medieval building, renovator of course, so you can see the the modern touches and the room was very nice, but I think they kept the original wall, so that's pretty neat. But to start off our stay here in Galway, we are starting with maybe a not so traditional breakfast, but it's actually quite traditional because each McDonald's has its own, right? So we're going to have our McDonald's breakfast, breakfast rolls. Um, which is a British thing, although we're not in Great Britain or the UK, unlike how a lot of people think, we are in the Republic of Ireland. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I want to say one thing about the coffee. While we're in London the previous days and now here, anytime we try to order black coffee, we just got Americanos, no filter coffee. Um, which I'm not complaining, but um, yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting. I don't think they really do filter coffee up here. And with that being said, we're going to drive to a very special place where, let's just say, it's going to be a bit of a cliffhanger. Let's go. All right, we have gone to the side road, and this is a throwback to Scotland a lot. The roads are very tight, and actually there's not as many passing no. points as there were in Scotland. We were a bit nervous because the car is pretty big. As soon as we saw it in the rental, we're like, we're not expecting this. But so far, so good. Really beautiful countryside. Very beautiful. I'm glad it's sunny outside. Yeah. So we made our way to the Wild Atlantic Way and it's uh, basically a road that goes along the west coast of Ireland and we run into this, the Dunair Castle and it's actually one of the most photographed castles here in Ireland so you may have seen it if you are already looking to Ireland and this castle actually holds banquets throughout the year in a way where it takes you back in time so it's in a traditional way how it would have been so that would be a really cool event to go to maybe we'll look it up and come back snowed last night. Now we have a lot of switchbacks on the road and some parts are quite icy. Ooh, and there's a car too. Ooh, okay. So we watched a lot of videos on Ireland and everyone keeps saying, wow, it must have been our lucky day. It's so sunny. So I'm starting to think with what I've seen in Scotland and England and Ireland. Yes, it can be very cloudy and rainy, but you also get quite a bit of sun. It's just like in the same day you can have rain, snow, and then later on for like three, four hours you can have a very sunny day. I know the sun's coming up. We have arrived to the cliffs. It was a, a bit of an adventure and um, we want to give you some info so you don't, so you're aware mistakes. of and don't make our mistakes. Yeah. That's Basically, there's an option to do this for free, but there's also the option to do the experience. Coming in, we thought we would just have to pay on the same parking lot just for the parking and don't get the audiobook and the rest that comes with this experience. However, getting to the visitor center, we were told that it's only like you pay. The price of the ticket varies based on the time of day you come. So if you come before 11 a.m., it's seven per adult. If you get the ticket online, 
if you come after 11 like we did it's 10 if you get it online um, thankfully they were nice enough to just like let us pull over and get the ticket online if you come here regardless of the time of day is 12 euro per person uh, kids under 12 I think go for free it includes the parking the parking lot that we could have done it for free is about three and a half kilometers away so it would make it a really long uh, walk in this cold and especially because we're in a hurry to make it back to go away during the sunlight um, so we paid for it now let's go see the cliffs so there's an exhibition center at uh, the beginning of the walk and we're actually inside the mountain so let's find out what we can in here and then go see the beauty outside so poetic about places like this looking out into the ocean and like the vastness and seeing the different colors and the, dr the dramatic scenery in the backdrop it really makes you understand why so many artists of all different kinds are so inspired by these spots. So being out here in the lookout and just like seeing the water I would not want to be in that ocean. Like, talk about wild Atlantic. The currents and just waves look really strong and scary, if I'm being honest. So over that way behind me, you can see a few pieces of land. And those are the Aran Islands, which I think are the biggest islands of Ireland. I actually thought they'd be a lot further away than they are. And maybe one day we'll get there too. Who knows? I'd really like to. This is actually a great time of year to come visit. There's quite a few tourists, but not as much as you'd expect for such a big sightseeing attraction here in Ireland. Um, so we can only imagine how packed this tiny path would be with tourists. And I think it would kind of ruin the experience because this is something so peaceful and just like, it's really nice to be able to experience it without crowds. Probably not as green as it would have been, especially since the last couple of days there was some frost. But regardless, it's super beautiful. Hey, Olivia. What? I'm gonna touch it. No, you're Maria. No. I'm gonna touch it. No, Maria, stop. I'm gonna touch it. Maria, <laughs> So this land formation actually came to be around 320 million years ago, which is so long ago to even fathom that this, so long ago, came into existence and now we see it as such a big tourist attraction and place to see around the world that so many people come to. It's very, very, very beautiful and very worth coming. So right there is the tip, the end of the walk, and you can just come back. However, we're running a bit low on time and sundown is around 4.45 during this month. So we want to head back to Galway and show it to you during the light. So we're not going to go all the way there. So the structure I'm pointing at right now is a famous structure that has been around since the early 1800s. And we're going to go a bit closer and tell you a little more who built it and why it's there. So I was a bit worried about our shoes and the path being very muddy, but it turns out it has a lot of gravel. So there's only a few places that you got to watch out for. It's a very well maintained path and very safe because they have these right here because you can actually see there's another path. It must have been like the old one for the older days. Mm -hmm. 
It all started with a man named Cornelius O'Brien, and he was actually the first person to realize, hey, we can actually make this a tourist attraction. And it was in the 1800s, early 1800s, I believe. He was actually from the area and he lived most of his life here. He had a land and a house. And he was actually a member of the parliament for quite some time. Uh, and he did a lot to promote Ireland. So he built this structure. A lot of people mistake this for a lighthouse because it's at the edge of the cliff, but it's not. It's the O'Brien Tower. And the purpose was for him to bring friends and other noble visitors from the time to entertain them. So have dinners and celebrations, dancing right by this beautiful cliffside. I mean, I cannot imagine how amazing that would have been. And we actually know of all this and of his character and what he did because of so many accounts of traveling. So back in the day, a lot of noble young men, what they would actually do is they would travel throughout Europe to further educate themselves. And from what was left of their journals, we would see their accounts of coming here to the tower and celebrating and having a good time, which actually reminds me of the Neolithic site we went to in Malta, Gigantia. And the reason why we knew so much from the 1700s and 1800s was because of basically rich young men traveling around Europe and that, those being some of the sites and writing their journals about it. We thought we were being rained on earlier, but we just realized, uh, I don't know if, you can, if the camera can actually catch this, but right behind me from the cliff, there's seawater coming up because it's so windy and just like splashing over there. So earlier we thought, oh wait, it's raining, but there's not many clouds. Makes a lot more sense now. All right, if you enjoyed the video so far, please go ahead and hit the like button, maybe subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We would really, really appreciate it. It's so windy, let's go. So now what we're going to do is head back to Galway and uh, see where the rest of the day takes us. So we've made our way to Galway, a town city on the west coast of Ireland and it's really known within Ireland and internationally for its arts and literature with a lot of famous poets coming from here but also they're known for the amount of pubs with traditional music so we'll go see some of that later but we're just kind of taking in the, the scenery. in Air Square and behind me is a doorway of a front house from a prominent family back in the day and it's actually very interesting about this is it used to be in a different location it was removed from there and brought in this square in 1905 by funding of the Galway's Archaeological Society so this has been an exhibit over here for the locals for a very long time So there's evidence that the area was settled during the 1100s. However, it wasn't until 1484 that the city was granted mayoral status from the English crown. The city was ruled by oligarchy of 14 merchant families. But what's even more interesting, 12 of those 14 families claim to be of Norman origin, which would mean like the Northern French area, and two, only two were Irish. So there's a few facts for you to get you ready for dinner. All right, so we are walking to a new area to grab dinner, and we hear this noise and we look over and massive water. It's very is, rapid. Yeah. And you'd think there's like a waterfall on the other side. Mm -hmm. 
We've come to a restaurant called Hooks, where it's supposed to be very good local seafood brought in every day from the sea fish market. And we were very hungry, so we decided to get a starter, which are the crab and chorizo croquettes with a sweet chili mayo. Let's see. It looks amazing. The combination of the crispy coating, the sweet chili, the potato, and the crab is so good. And you just get like that little light bite of the chorizo. Highly recommend coming here. On to the next course. I ordered the fish pie, which is one of my favorite dishes that I haven't had in a very long time. I'm really excited. So it's like a creamy white sauce with different fish. This one I think has salmon, haddock, it was like green onion, I think, or herbs, and then a crispy, cheesy mash on top. So that's it. I just love getting that pack of that mature cheddar everywhere here. <laughs> really good. I just get fish and chips everywhere we go. What I'm curious about though, so we had a revelation uh, a few days ago when we were in London and we noticed how in London the fish and chips come with the skin of the fish versus when you go more in the north of the UK the skin is off. So what do you think is going to be? You don't think it has skin? Yeah, I don't, I, I, I had the same feeling. I don't think it's gonna have skin. So I'm gonna add some vinegar. And I have a feeling that this is gonna be one of the best fish and chips I've ever had. Oh, and did I say the fries are double fried? They taste like Irish potatoes. <laughs> Moment of truth, no skin. Wow, it smells amazing. The fish is literally falling apart. You can tell it's so fresh. I lost some precious batter. It's very nice. I just think it needs a little more vinegar and a little more salt. I'm so excited to put all this good food in our bellies and then head over for some traditional Irish music in a pub. Hello. Could I have a pint of the Irish pale and then a pint of Guinness, please? Thank you. And of course I had to get Guinness here in Ireland, I like stouts, and plus it gives you a nice stash. So this was one of Olivia's bucket list items, go to an Irish pub with Irish music playing. So how would you rate that from uh, 1 out of 10? Yeah. It was nice. I just wish I wasn't so tired. I wish there was more people. I wish there was some singing. But you know, you can't have it all. Yeah. So in her mind, she had it like. And let's, I will get that. In in her mind, she had it that she was going. There there would be people dancing, singing. But I think you would get it that more like during the weekend or maybe St. Patty's Day. I think during the weekend because I think it happens regularly. With that being said, we're gonna go get some sleep because tomorrow we have a road trip back to Dublin. Yeah, one day in Dublin. Yes. So as always, thank you for watching. We appreciate you being here. We hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.